Hi, and hello, football fans. It's your old pal Dave, Dave Damashek. What's going down? I hope all's well wherever you are. Welcome to the Dave Damashek football program presented by McDonald's. We're joined by Handsome Hank, who's been away for a little while, and we're joined by a newcomer, Dan Van Kirk. We'll do proper introductions in a minute. We've got the all-time draft of 2016 coming up. We've got some Twitter heat going on with some pro football players. RG3 had a presser to beat the band where he dropped all sorts of cliches. First, though, let's get into it. Our onside kick of sorts, the lightning round, reacting to all that's going on in the world of football, but more importantly, in the greatest game of all, the game called life. Fellas, Colin Kaepernick, a lot of people upset with him because he won't take less money to go the Denver Broncos. Would you take less money if you thought there was at least the potential for a happier life, handsome Hank? I start with you. Uh, yeah, I think so. It's Do about you? the people. It's about the people, isn't it? And he, he wants the Super Bowl. Not really. It's half the money. I don't. I can't imagine who would take uh, less, I'm half, the money. half the money. I'm not taking half the money, especially half Kirk. my money. I mean, he should have enough to live off by this point, you right. would imagine. All right? And I don't think he's guaranteed he's going to fit in in San Francisco. So why not go to a team that just won a Super Bowl and have a chance to have a much longer career where you'll make more money in the long run anyway? The answer is because Jake the Snake Plumber over, uh, took the gig from John Elway and then was constantly compared to Elway. That's exactly what happens to whoever goes under center. Well, you didn't win the Super Bowl. We're the Super Bowl champs, and look at what you did, Dar. Do you feel like situation. people think Peyton Manning won the Super Bowl? Ah, no. I don't know, but I think <laughs> that if Colin Kaepernick does anything less than gets him to double-digit wins and so on, that then he'll well, be berated by the locals. Lucky there. for him, Peyton couldn't have set the bar lower. Next up, well, that, that much I agree with. We've been talking about this lately. Let's say, Dan Van Kirk, that one day your deeds on the planet Earth are so great that they have to make a trophy of you. What's the pose? Mm. Oh, man. Uh, probably something where I'm, like, asking if we're good here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Are we good here? Uh, we'll ask Malik Jackson, late of those Denver Broncos and new to the Jacksonville Jaguars, what his pose would be and a bunch of other stuff, too. He's upcoming on the show today as well. Handsome Hank, how say you? I think they would give a trophy. I'm incredibly good at hide-and-seek. Mm -hmm. And so I, it would just be there'd be nothing on the trophy. There would be the bottom of the trophy wow. and then nothing else because that's my. I'm so good at hiding. Wow. I like that very much. The uh, the best road trip I'm on Sunday night on NFL Network. They're going to show my road trip and uh, a bunch of other people here from NFL Media. Our trip to Indianapolis a couple of weeks ago. What's the best road trip you've ever taken, handsome? Man? I think we've talked about it on the podcast yes, before, have. Dave. I aged eighteen, drove uh, with a friend for f took four or five months to drive across these United States of America. And uh, uh, and he took with, the manhood of calves in I, Kentucky I, while I he was there. I castrated calves for a while. I met some strange people in in Louisiana. Um, all kinds of things. One day we oh, need wow. to do a three-hour special about yeah, was, uh, Handsome's journey. Yeah, I've been on the other end of that. I artificially inseminated a cow once. Really? Yeah, you go Ooh. shoulder yep. deep on that. Yeah, you really have to reach yeah, in. Van really Kirk, do. best road trip. I just took it. I drove up the coast on Highway 1 up through Big Sur. I ah, just, that's beautiful. Yeah, I rented. They have these uh, vans that are like little mini RVs, and it's got a little fridge in there and a sink and a stove, and I just took off for – Five days with no clue when I was going to stop or where I wanted to go and just stay along. All by yourself. Yeah. Nice. Best road Great trip I do. ever took was the one I didn't take was uh, the year after the Steelers as a Steelers fan. I thought it my responsibility to make the journey from Chicago when I was living there back to Pittsburgh when the Steelers were in a title game. So I went back, watched them lose to the San Diego Chargers. It broke my heart. The following year, I got into the car to go watch them play the Colts, Jim Harbaugh's Colts. I got about two hours outside of town and my car broke down. And so I had to get it fixed uh, overnight and then drive back to Chicago. I didn't make it. The Steelers won barely. The they ball did make barely it. rolled yeah. off the belly of the receiver in the end zone on the Hail Mary. Mm -hmm. I dare say that had Damashek been in the stands, that would have been enough to keep that ball there so that I would have suffered just a little bit more. The Super Bowl, the Steelers advanced to the Super Bowl uh, that year. Super Bowl 51, we've seen the changes. Let's just keep on updating it. Dan Van Kirk, who's going to the Super Bowl? Cardinals and, ooh, if I had to pick another one. You have to. I do have to? I'd like you to. Let's see. Who It's always somebody surprising. That's what I feel like. Like they're, They usually got to the edge before, and then they're not there now. So a good AFC team that I like. You know, this team out of New England, the Patriots. Oh, wow. That is Oh, that is handsome. a surprise. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go. You're going to like this, Dave. I'm going to say that the Steelers and Cardinals are going to match up again in the Super Bowl. I like where your head's at. Real quick, uh, comedy legend uh, Jason Whitlock declared uh, comedy dead now for all of time. Mm. Is it dead, Hans? I don't think so. I don't know no. why he would know. 
good because I was looking forward yeah. to the new season of Nathan for you. Right. And I sometimes <laughs> like late night shows right. and everything. Like, do we have to shut it Cancel all down? Cancel it Man, Kirk, you're in comedy. Yeah, is I tried dead to. Or you? Not that I know of. I feel like it's thriving. I don't know. If, remember in the uh, at the 80s, they had the big comedy boom. I don't think we're at that like surplus mm. level of it yet because then it kind of went on right. live support for a little while right after this. Well, but I my advice to you, shape. Dan Van Kirk. Shape. Have some dignity. Walk away. It's over. Get out walk of it. Away. If Jason done. Whitlock says it's done, where are we to go from here? <laughs> what, right, what guys, are we thanks supposed? for having me on. <laughs> and, and finally, NL Central. He's the Chicago guy. I am. I'm a Pittsburgh guy. Who's winning the NL Central? <sighs> oh, Packers. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, Cubs are. They are going to win it. I mean, it's hard to imagine they won't. I feel bad for the Cardinals. Who knew? They, Why? Remember they were good at baseball? They're not good anymore. Who cares? No, I know. I celebrated. Handsome Hank. Why don't you tell me, first of all, who's in that division? Well, I, th- I figured you would, of course, cite right. your beloved Brew. Oh, they're in that division. Yeah. Oh, they're Brew. The Brew The Brewers have got it hands down. Is Prince Fielder still a part of that Is club? Is no. he in? No, no, he's long gone. He's the long gone who there. just beat the Giants when we're recording this. They won, uh, I think, last night again. That's right. Yeah. Handsome Hank, let's say hello to him. He's back from Nashville, Tennessee, and, uh, and other parts here. He's our resident Miami Dolphins fan. Handsome Hank. Hello, Handsome. How were your journeys across these United States? They were good, thank you. I went to Nashville, Tennessee, and a place called Boca Raton. Which means the mouth of the rat in Spanish. Is that right? That's correct, yeah. The mouth of the rat. Why would Yeah, it doesn't it seem like it. I'm, I'm not sure that that's a, a good name for anywhere. No, indeed. No, indeed. Um, um, and uh, let's also say hello to Dan Van Kirk, whose voice you just uh, heard over the last few minutes here. You can also watch him on YouTube. You got your own fancy YouTube channel on the Nerd. Well, yeah. Uh, it's DVK. On, yeah, the show's called DVK. It's just a collection of uh, characters and sketches and things that I wrote most of them. Um, got some other people to write some great ones, and a lot of wonderful people are in the show. So. And then yeah. I came to know Dan Van Kirk and was uh, positively smitten when I paid a visit to <laughs> Scarborough <laughs> County or country. I, yeah. You so was co- I on the country or the county? I think you've done both, if I had to assume. But the one we did together was Scarborough County, and that drops every Tuesday in the Scarborough Country feed, so they're all together, and we had you on the show. And Check you were, it out. A delight. Van Kirk is a delight. The Sklar, bro- the Sklar brothers, of course, delightful themselves. And uh, coming up in Chicago, Illinois, on June 10th, Dan Van Kirk. Live at North Bar. Him. Yeah. At where? That out. At North Bar. At North Bar. North little, Bar. What is that? That's not the a at. sand. What is that called? Yeah. I just call it an at. So yeah, the at symbol yeah. at North Bar. It's at North and Ashland, and I'll be there. The 8 o'clock show on June 10th. I think tickets are only 10 bucks in advance. North and Ashland. Yeah, I've mm-hmm. been around that. Yeah. Part. Yeah, well, we're going to Chicago in a few weeks. Maybe you can give us a couple of tips on that. In the meantime, you're seeing some uh, some Czech Republic uh, people jumping in here with some questions for us. I really enjoyed the one there. I hope we can get to that one, Wilk, behind the glass. Uh, somebody dropped me a line about uh, about shapes. I want to we'll, – we'll dig into Ooh. that one. When that pops up, Wilk – let me know, and uh, and whatever we're doing, we're going to interrupt it. Meantime, like I say, Sunday night, 8.30 on the uh, on NFL Network. Um, there is going Must to be on one of those. Where's my of card? I had a card right here, and now I can't find it, Wilk. There's a card to mention. I don't know what happened to it. 8.30, Sunday night. There, <laughs> Don't shake your head. I don't know what happened to the card. I had it here. I don't have it. You, wrote, you wrote it here, Davidson. You're right. Oh, no, the there it's right. That, yes, so. 8.30 Eastern on NFL Network, Dave and Ike and Maurice and Colleen Wolf and Mark Iztook, everybody else over there. NFL road trip in Indianapolis. Pat McAfee and I had a positively gay time. We played two-on-two two against Ike and Maurice in uh, legendary game. Hinkle Fieldhouse. Then we went and we drove uh, go-karts. Take a look at that. Or take a listen. I way. thought we were going to go. Oh, we'll go to a go car track. It'll be fun. It'll be cute. We'll drive little kids' cars. And now all of a sudden, look at that. The audio listeners are gaga. Yeah. Yeah. They love this. It's me it's driving really around in a car very six. slowly. That's not very good or very bad. The Girl Scouts, when they come look at in, Tom Arnold. They do. <laughs> Tom Arnold! <laughs> Tom Arnold. Like Tom, Tom Arnold singing. Tune in, if only to see how much a dead ringer the guy who runs the go-kart <laughs> yeah. track in Indianapolis is for uh, for Tom Arnold. Are those fast ones? 
they were super fast to the point that it was really scary. Yeah, they, like, can, right. there's a line there where you're like, oh, the, I, I don't know if I should be. Well, it's like that Tokyo drift feeling. The back end sort of slides away from me, and I feel like, well, this is unnatural. I'm about to flip myself onto my <laughs> head here. So, of course, uh, Granny Dave has, to, sl- has to pump the brakes. And Pat McAfee, in a 20-lap race, lapped me four, maybe five times. Really? That's a, well, because it was scary. <laughs> it was a terrible day. You're just waving him past. You go. It was it was a day filled with humiliation. It should have been really Dave's fantasy day yeah. in Indianapolis playing at Hinkle Fieldhouse. Damon Bailey from my Indiana Hoosiers happened to walk Came onto to the join court. You. We played ball. We're playing two on two. Then I got to drive coach. Then I did the combine. I did all the drills. All it was was just a sear and a, just one event after the other. I like how also the throughout the day, uh, throughout the course of the day, the the – um, the apparel you had to wear got tighter and tighter as well, which was less and less flattering for you. Yeah, it was no good. So, all right, let's uh, let's uh, move on here. D'Angelo Williams, the mm. the Levy and Bell backup, but still a gangbusters option at running back, got into a little Twitter beef with uh, Vontez Burfick, the cuckoo for the Cincinnati Bengals, who apparently forgets how that game turned out because he is mentioning to D'Angelo, oh, I'm still in your head four months later. Yeah, but you didn't win the game, Vontez. <laughs> Remember when you ran off the, off field, the field with 97? Right seconds to go wagging your finger and celebrated in the bowels of the Cincinnati Stadium and then still ended up losing the game because of you because of you as well <laughs> I still don't think you figured out how to uh, to focus on the uh, on, on the bullseye there Vontes. I think you're getting distracted by things anyway it's always fun to uh, to look at these uh, at, at these beefs that are going on these little feuds um, and uh, so it inspires us to return to an old game follow the tweeter Let's set, let's mm. resolve all pro football matters by seeing who has more Twitter followers. That's the you know it's the ancient way to measure who's right about anything is if you have more Twitter followers. Let's start here. Colin Kaepernick or Mark Sanchez. These right now at least look like the two prime candidates to be the starter. Although late word, Johnny Football and the Broncos are talking. This would be no a way. Oh yeah. Oh no. That's a, that's for real. That's a rumor out there. At to least to go with his new hand tattoo. What? What? Yeah. I didn't know about you the hand tattoo. Oh, yeah. Denzel got a tattoo of a crown, like a little prison tat right on his hand. Nice. Little crown. Just a little crown. You want to be ready for when you're in there. Yeah, I guess so. Or he's a big <laughs> Where the Wild Things fan right. is. I don't know. <laughs> got a lot of ink, do you, Van Kirk? <laughs> None yet. No. I'm working on it. Do more of sketches. Once you, I just saw Biebs, uh performing the other day. He's got the neck tattoo all the way up to the neck, and there's just no coming back from right. it. I mean, no. I don't think he's ever going in for an accounting job. Well, he has but. he has dreadlocks now, too, the Biebs. Did yeah. you see that? Yeah. It looks like the Grinch's fingers just hanging down over <laughs> his head. Um, all right, let's let's uh, let's do it then. Colin Kaepernick or Mark Sanchez. Van Kirk, who has more Twitter followers? I'm going to go Kaepernick. I think that's got to be the case. I Although think he's been right. – Sanchez has been around a lot longer. And let's consider this before you answer. He is loved by the ladies. That's exactly what I was going to say. I still don't think that trend. Yeah, because it, yeah, his, followers. his peak of that, like the GQ covers mm-hmm. and the commercials he were doing, that was kind of before the right. big pop of Twitter. Yeah. Like it was 2009, 2011. I would maybe? say as well, I bet you some people have unfollowed him. And also, Along the way, people are just like, forget it. <laughs> I know, but not wouldn't that same thing affect Colin Kaepernick? Not as like, much. Not as much. Like, Mark, when was Mark following. Sanchez really last relevant? Touche. All right, let's take a look at it. I'm going to go with Kaepernick myself. Reveal the answer, if you would, Wilk. It is what? It's Sanchez. The Sanchez. Wow. Those 920,000. He's, uh, he's coming very close to the seven figure. Kaepernick, mark there. remember Kaepernick had that uh, that jacked like naked football yeah. player picture. I thought that would have given that would have bumped for him sure. Up. How right. about that, Kaepernick with uh, eight twenty one? That's he not started in a three, Super Bowl. I know. Sanchez almost got to a couple of Super Bowls. Next up, the most recent Super Bowl: the Broncos or the Panthers? Who has more Twitter followers? Handsome. The Panthers are really good at Twitter. But I don't know if that they translates are. into more followers. But I'm going to go with the Panthers. I have, incidentally, I have something to tell you about the Broncos. Uh, you and you got into a feud with the Broncos um, Twitter handle 
I, I met the gentleman. Who, I've met him as well. I know. I, I wanted to. T- I would try. I wanted to take a picture with him to uh-huh. send to you on Twitter to show that I was with him, but it, I I couldn't find the words in order to be able to ask him if that was possible. So what's your answer, Broncos? Bronco. I'm say Panthers. I I'm gonna go the same way, Panthers. Based I'm off this Broncos. season and their retweets of what they could do with Cam and yeah, everything, yeah. I feel like they would have. Got they're hysterical. Good the Panthers they're are the gold standard of Twitter handles in sports, or at least they're in the top five. The Broncos just won the Super Bowl though, and they're one of the you know. They're one of the you know, you know, brand the- names in the NFL. I'm going Broncos here. Let's reveal the answer. It is well, the who, Broncos. Ding for one, who? Oh, my God. For Damashek, whose name's on the show, oh, handsome? Right, fine. Thank you. 1.7 for the Broncos, 1.38 for the Panthers. Uh, well, I, you Broncos fans, you're missing out. Go follow the Panthers. Did the guy say something nicer? No, I, did, I didn't even want to bring it up. I was about to start talking to him anything. about it, and then I decided not to bring it up. Lean in. I know I should have done. I know. Be a I wanted to I make trouble. I, I wanted to make some trouble. trouble, but I, <laughs> I would have made I... trouble with him. Malik Jackson, who's going to be here with us in just a second, or another departed Denver Bronco, Brock Osweiler, who has more Twitter followers, Dan Van Kirk. Osweiler. Osweiler, he's the key. I'm going against what I would think. Yeah, I'm no dummy. I'm not. Malik Jackson's not going to walk in here, and then I'm going to say Handsome I'm going to say that that uh, Brock Osweiler has more Twitter followers. Well, I'm not going I'm off gonna who say... deserves them. Well, but he, I'm not. <laughs> I just tell Malik Jackson I said that it was him. All right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Osweiler, pretty boy. You know, I got that one. Yes, right. Malik Jackson, 19. K. Come on, Malik. Ooh. I don't know. cancel him. Is it too late to cancel? No, he's still <laughs> all right. Well, he's gonna. Show That's up. that to me. That means his Instagram is still linked to his Twitter account, so he doesn't even yeah, get the. Yeah. He thinks he's putting out photos, and it's just a link nobody wants to click on on Twitter. Osweiler with 44k. Huh. Still low. The new starting QB of an NFL football team has 44,000. But then let's check. I bet he last tweeted when he was in school or something. Maybe oh, that's I think those are all college follows? Yeah. yeah. Mm. It is true that the, the if anybody considers themselves, if a group of uh, of human beings consider themselves uh, with, uh, with political candidates who better not go anywhere near third rails, it's NFL QBs. They comport themselves as though right. I better not say anything right. because I'll just get in trouble for doing it. So maybe that explains that. Let's move on, though. Handsome Hank or Dan Van Kirk, who has more Twitter followers, Handsome Hank. Dan, oh, it, it must be Dan Van Kirk because I have to express modesty. <laughs> I, I would say handsome Hank. Oh yeah, I, I got to do it too. No, because right. mine, are, <laughs> oh, mine are low. I'm low. All right, let's. I'm gonna go. I'm going Van Kirk on yeah, the. Me too. Uh, on the uh, oh no, handsome Hank. Hold you. Handsome Hank with twelve point five thousand. Really, Dan that's Van Kirk. who are these people? Nine point. By the way, so I got zero in that. I got, I got not a single one of those right. This I'm very bad I don't at that even game. have. See, that's. I don't even have a little K next to mine. It still shows all the numbers. When you get to that ten. <laughs> when you get to that ten. You're seeing every number up and down. All right. Well, let's bring him in here now. Uh, Listen, I'm going to pull back the uh, curtain. He was already in here, so there will be no uh, embarrassment Mm -hmm. for you. I found him to be delightful. He's the new member of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Here he is, everybody. My conversation with uh, Malik Jackson. Oh, look at this. Studio 66, positively festive with a guy who I can't imagine anybody in the world is having a better 2016 than this guy. He's a world champion, and he's a new member of the Jacksonville Jaguars. He's got a wad of loot in his pocket, too, as a result of that. It's Malik Jackson. What's the poop, fella? Nothing much, man. Just glad to be on the show with you. Thank you for having me. Oh, well, certainly. And then also, I I left out the greatest detail of all. You have a little uh, three-month-old girl. She's Mm -hmm. behind the glass there. Adorable. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's enjoying that so far, I'm oh, yeah. imagining. Oh, yeah, happy being a dad. You know, it's definitely a new experience. You know, a lot of things, learning a lot of new things, patience, and just having fun with it. You know, they say they grow fast, so I'm just trying to, you know, watch her and take my time before I have to worry about the season and, you know, I have to worry about other things. But Is but. she undefeated? As far as what? In, in the, since she's – been on the planet earth or oh, not yeah, yeah has oh, yeah. she not has has uh her dad not lost a game <laughs> uh actually yeah i don't think i don't think i've lost a game with sister yeah i don't think As, so well she was born right before pittsburgh's game the first time so if we skip that one i think i think she was undefeated well okay well i'm a steelers fan so i have to <laughs> note that one but for your sake let's say that now i will warn you that uh, i hope you like animated movies because those oh you do good mm-hmm. what's your favorite one uh i don't i don't really know the names of them but I like the uh, the Dragon Ball Z, the Brawly one. That was pretty dope. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
I haven't seen one in a while, but I do like anime movies though. Well, good. Well, then that's good news for you because yeah. in the next few years you're going to watch a <laughs> lot of those things. If, yeah. If your girl is anything like my kids, <laughs> let's do something here real quick. Yeah, you know the you were one of the very first big names to come off the board in free agency just off of that Super Bowl victory, and I'm fascinated by the process of NFL free agency. I want to do a pie chart of okay. what factors play into that. If we could get a pie chart up there, maybe we can fill this thing out here. What is about like this is um, that's close enough. For you got a piece already. Okay. That's a Well, that's not a pie chart. I wanted a pie. <laughs> I wanted I mean, I wanted a pie chart, not a pie. But all right, let's talk about that. What went into it? Did they wine and dine you pretty good from Jacksonville? Uh, pretty much what went into it, man. They were just uh, the team that came with the most and came the hardest. You know, it was one of those things that uh, Denver offered what they offered. And, uh, you know, I talked to uh, Chicago because Foxy was there, and I talked to Oakland because Del Rio was there. But nobody really came as hard and as strong as Jacksonville, so that's pretty much what it was. Did they take you out for, like, stakes? Nah, what happened was uh, – so they called me. First of all, I don't think they know L.A. So they called me at 1 o'clock and they said, can you be at LAX in two hours? And I'm like, well, that would be kind of hard, but – we tried, and we ended up missing our flight and everything, but we made it, and uh, we got there. So they didn't really whine and dine. We just went down there, signed it, had fun with the coaches and everybody, met like a player or two, and came back to L.A. to enjoy the offseason. All right. So then is it how much of a factor in the pie chart of free agency is the roster that you're going to? Does an NFL player care? Because it's easy to say, I want to win and all that sort of thing. But obviously if people are, like you say, if a team's coming after you and throwing a lot of money yeah. uh, behind it. I think the roster and the winning team, if you can kind of have that, like maybe when Peyton was going through his when he chose Denver, I think that's when it matters. But for me, man, I just, you know, my dream was to play in the NFL, and I, I didn't have any certain team I wanted to play for just playing in the NFL. So, you know, Jacksonville came strong and, and hard with a lot of cash, and so I said, okay, we'll go there. Well, I, I appreciate the candor on that. What's it like? Just listen. Duh, it's No one's going to think bad of you. What's it like to be rich? I mean, has it set in? Like, <laughs> I, It's the same thing after the Super Bowl ends. Everybody says, what's it feel like? Well, it hasn't set in yet. Yeah. Has it set into you that you're sort of, I'm in good shape forever now? I mean, it, it's kind of setting in, you know, but I think what, what makes me nervous is you think about the guys that's lost it. You know, you see all those. I have, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, er, yeah. you know, random people like me scratch their heads and say, how could that be? How yeah, do you do that? Exactly. So I'm, I'm more I'm more nervous. Like, it's it's cool to know, like, I've taken care of my family and everything, mm -hmm. but like I say, it's easy to get. It's hard to keep. So I just want to make sure I keep it and make sure my daughter has her trust fund and everybody else is taken care of. So that's you know, once I know everybody's set, when I get my money, I'll, I'll be happy. But right now it's just get it, make it put in the right places and watch it grow. I'm happy for you. Things are going your way. But I do have to bring up, and clearly it was not a part of your pie chart mm -hmm. in this consideration, is the uniform that you're going to have to wear. Yeah. Have you thought about that at all? I mean, teal is a good color for me. It matches my skin tone really well. So you think the teal and gold. Wait, the yeah. teal's going to go with your I skin? So. I have my, my daughter's diaper bag is teal and gold. So, you know, we got it before we even knew we were going is to. That try is that right? So, well. Tiffany, she's Tiffany, if you want to be correct. But, yeah. Same same thing. All right. Well, well. Listen, serendipity. <laughs> if that's the thing, if you like teal, but you've seen the helmet though, right? I mean, you know, weird looking. I think that's that's the future look. You know, I mean, I think you know they're trying to be futuristic and they're trying to be ahead of the game and, and do things that you know can get more fans and you know have people say ooh. So it, well, I, d I definitely say ooh. <laughs> I, I definitely said ooh, that when I saw ooh, that helmet. Not you. <laughs> oh, not you. I yeah, see. Ooh. I, <laughs> it, to me, I've said it a million times. I'll say it for the million and first. It looks like a Rolo candy left in the back of a hot car. A for Rolo too long. candy. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it's melting down there in the heat. A Rolo candy. That's funny. Yeah. I, I wouldn't think about that. Well, but, now now every time you put it on, you're going to think a, of me. Like Rolo. Hey, that pot belly guy back in L.A. <laughs> compared this Remember, to a Rolo. Posture. Posture. Right, before we started here, uh, Malik was good enough to teach me some posture as a, a pot-bellied fellow to help keep myself looking nice and uh, slim there. And you can already see the results. Chest Look at that. Yes. Look at that. Yeah. Like two Greek gods in there, really. <laughs> Chip hey, marble. that pose actually makes me think of this. I've been talking to some fellows about this. Let's say 50 years from now, your deeds on the gridiron are so great mm -hmm. that they decide we got to have the Malik Jackson trophy. What's the pose going to be? <laughs> the Valique Jackson Trophy. <sighs> I'm probably run off the field like this, you know, getting that sub in there, you know, after two or three plays. Like, hey, come on, let's go. You know, I gotta what, get out of there. Yeah. What a wonderful homage to yourself that would be. You know, I'm tired. Get me out of here. Let's 
go. You know, team player status. That's what that means. You know? I see. I I got you. Right. Hey. Ultimate team guy. I hey, I want to share some of hey, this with everybody. Him. Plays. I'm not trying to be selfish. You know? <laughs> Running off the field. I like that idea. <laughs> Um, what about the, you know, listen, I know you you won a world championship, so clearly uh, everything turned out well, but no jive. What was it like in the Denver locker room in, you know, November, December, when clearly this was, you know, hey, you got to win all three phases is what a coach always says, but clearly you were winning on defense, but not as much on offense. What happens? Is there a, a do, do you guys start to talk in your with, amongst your unit and say, "Man, we got to do everything to win games here." I mean, it's not really that we got to do everything. I think that the, what we thought about is, you know, we just got to go out there and do what we've been doing. You know, we were pretty good all season, starting from you know really week eight from when the season was getting ended. But it wasn't like, "Oh, offense sucks. We're going to do this." It was they're 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 struggling, but we got to go out there and keep continuing what we're doing. Make sure that uh, our offense scores more points than other offense, and if it's three or or whatever, that's what it is. So, How crazy was it for you being a relatively young guy going into that Denver locker room and Peyton Manning being in there too, another mm-hmm. volunteer grad, but of course probably, I guess, the, the greatest of all volunteers, yeah, right? Yeah, he's definitely up there on the, on the Tennessee, uh, I guess, Mount Rushmore, if you want to say so to speak. But uh, it was cool, you know, because like I said, you, you go around Tennessee and you see him everywhere, you know, just the pictures and you see the endorsements and everything, and then you meet him in person and you just know he's a humble guy, and you learn how to be a pro as pro watching him and, and just do the things he does, you know. First guy there, first guy, last guy to leave, you know. It's one of those things that you just learn how to be a pro. And if you want to do it for, for five to or 18 years, you know that you watch him and you just study him, you know. And definitely a good guy to kind of sit back, watch him, and learn how to be an NFL player. Yeah. Do you think he'll be uh, – I, I suspect he'll eventually just take over the Tennessee Titans or something like that, <laughs> do you, like John Elway did. I mean, we'll see. I don't, I don't know if uh, PM is uh, – is up to it. I don't. I don't know what he wants to do. I don't know any of his aspirations after football. So, I don't know, man. I, I, Pizza and beer. Those are his two aspirations, <laughs> according to him. Playing with his kids. You know, that, that that'd be my aspiration after I'm done for a few years. But who knows? You know, I'm sure he wants to stay in football. But maybe he goes back to Tennessee Volunteers and tries to do something there. Who knows? Weigh in for me on this real quick. We're doing something. We're in the process of doing the all-time draft of 2016. So all 32 teams still have their picks, and they still have the needs that exist in 2016. The difference is we can take any player in history, save current players. Here's where we got uh, so far. Anthony Munoz out of USC, the left tackle, will now be protecting Marcus Mariota's blind side. Ryan Leaf of Washington State, the Browns doing Brownsy kind of things. They could have taken John. Elway or somebody else, but they wound up with Leaf. Reggie White of uh, of your volunteers goes to the Chargers. Staw back to the Cowboys. And right there, your new team, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Deion Sanders, cornerback, Florida State. Is that a good addition or would you maybe look somewhere else? LT out of UNC. Well, I mean, you know, if I'm, if I'm upstairs and know what I'm talking about, let's say I know what I'm talking about. Uh, I would I would like Deion, especially as a D lineman. You know, you need a if – I, if I can get an extra second to get to that quarterback – That'd be awesome. I know Dion is uh, very, very good at what he does. And, uh, yeah, I think that's a great pick. You know, put him and then uh, uh, Prince on the other side and just go to work. Boy, you must be chomping at the bit. If Dante Fowler's anything close to what he was projected to be, yeah. with you doing what you did in Denver, freeing up Von Miller and Demarcus Ware, could be uh, glorious days coming up in Jacksonville. It, it should be fun. You know, I just got to go in there and keep doing what I was doing. You know, I just got to go in there and just talk to talk to the kid and see, see what he thinks and just go out there and when we practice, make sure we get a game plan going and, watch the film of our opponents, you know, just kind of introduce what D-Ware and Vaughn taught me as far as how to prepare for a game and how to at least prepare a pass rush, pass rush game. So it should be fun. You know, that kid has a lot of upside, and I just can't wait to see him play and play with him. Well, we see some defensive linemen being projected to your Jaguars, and uh, that would be good because based on the uh, – <laughs> get in here. I need, you know, I, I'm ready to take a rest. Somebody else come uh, in. That that alone is reason for them to draft. There you there, go. Huh? <laughs> all right. Malik Jackson, you're a delightful fellow. Congratulations on all the success and good health to you Thanks. through 2016 and beyond, and have fun with that little girly. Appreciate you. Thank all you. All right. Malik Jackson, everybody. I told you. Nice fella. I liked his statue idea, too. That's a, you know, it's a yeah. egalitarian. Like, I don't have to take all the snaps just because right. I make all the money. In fact, because I make so much money, I should be in a position to call for replacement. Yeah, there's a reluctance. You don't see a reluctant statue very often. Usually they feel like they're supposed to be there, but one that's like, no, you, you go. Yeah. Is, mm-hmm. I like that. Get me out of here. <laughs> 
Well, uh, you know, you, Malik Jackson uh, was talking statues, and while we were doing that, Van Kirk, you brought up the OJ statue that the was OJ featured statue. in the uh, in the recent FX show. You know, he commissioned that himself, right? He had to have. Well, I don't think it would be a gift. Who who right. get you a gigantic statue, statue for the backyard? Oh. Maybe you know, in a previous days, I bet a I bet a Bob Kardashian would have given him that gift. Not by the end, though. Bob Kardashian <laughs> was done with OJ. <laughs> Just that that statue was very. Who it became haunting by the end, and creepy. I, I like that he went out to visit it. I want to know now. I'm I, I'm now I'm obsessed by in the last episode of uh, the People versus OJ how much it's based on any report, uh, any sort of anecdotes that like so OJ comported himself this way in I the car on the it. way home. Like, I do think, you think he actually yeah. was like, "I'm back, Brentwood. OJ, the juice is back, Brentwood." A lot of it. Now, some of Johnny Cochran's best moments were actually other lawyers. I know that for a fact. Oh, really? Well. So some of the great moments that he had in the show were uh, some of the – I think Carl, the, the gentleman who usually sat behind him, he's the one who got Furman to say, I plead the fifth on whether or not I conspired to arrest uh, or, or part, playing a role in the conviction of O.J. Simpson, hopefully. Um, but, yeah, that show was great. And you know Travolta's already said he's back for season two. What? What do you mean? Yeah, they're going to do another one. No. They're going to pick what? another true crime story. Oh, and but not OJ season two. No, but what? I feel like I feel like you know people beat up David Schwimmer a little bit. I thought he was kind of Come fine on. in it. Yeah. I didn't think he was. I didn't think he was absurd in it. Travolta, Travolta played the whole thing like he was on SNL in a sketch. And I loved told it. Him. I loved all everything Travolta <laughs> was doing for me. Crushed. <laughs> Well, it was hysterical. Yes, it was. Sure. Oh, it was. I hope. But it was, it was sort of like. I mean, I always have said. You ever see Starship Troopers or Flash Gordon? Mm -hmm. Either one of those. Yeah. I feel like the key to both those pictures is is that they were playing for some some form of satire or broad comedy, but they didn't tell the stars. They they didn't tell <laughs> Casper Van Dien. Right. And they didn't tell the guy who played Flash Gordon. Like, no, this is super serious, right. man. And they play it super serious. Yeah. And, and they're terrible camp actors. Camping it up in the and everybody else is ridiculous right. in it. Right. And right. therefore, it works. Separately. Yeah, they tell Travolta, there's going to be a lot of music under this scene. We're going to come in and zoom tight on you. And you just give it your all. And then they just framed it out straight with him just super intense. <laughs> <laughs> but then you look at uh, Shapiro. At no point does Shapiro ever in his life ever uh, – Travolta <laughs> juts his jaw. Who do you think you're playing? I don't That's know. his thing, though. I guess. Uh, oh. It was great. Not since Broken Arrow have I been so proud. <laughs> of Howie Long's gig. Yeah. yeah. Howie Long. Yeah, big, big one for him. Christian Slater. That's a great Slater. candidate. Slater too. fell off. Yeah, he did. But there's a – well, no, he's He just won a Golden with, uh, Globe. Mr. Robot. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I haven't seen it yet. Also, that's a great list that we need to put together at some point soon. I always they, – they, they get into my brain and then they move back out. Are movies that would be made better if you would recast the female lead? That was a weird one. The redhead woman in – Oh, yeah. Where'd she that, come from and where'd she go? She was in like a few movies for three years. Was that the same girl from Dumb and Dumber? Holly? No. Okay. No, not the same. Okay, but yeah, with, you're right. Uh, She's Jim kind of forgettable. I Jim would also Carrey like to say – Take movies with NFL stars and recast them with today's, today's NFL, NFL stars. stars. So who would be in Howie? Like is JJ Watt in JJ Broken Watt, Arrow? Yeah, JJ wow. Watt would be in Broken Arrow. That would that's a that's Cannonball a Run. Who plays Terry Bradshaw's role? Oh. The Hayseed. Uh, Brett Favre. Phil Rivers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Phil's be a good one. Hmm. All right, let's move on to uh, some important business here. Oh, before we get to the all-time draft of 2016. I see what you're. I see your graphics on there. If you're watching on YouTube, Smart I encourage guys. you to do uh, go there and uh, you can, uh, in fact, follow our playlist there, the DDFP, and you can watch all the shows. If you're an audio consumer, um, we're back to doing full shows at least for a little while. I don't know for how long, but yeah, we're doing the full shows there for you on YouTube. RG3 gave a gangbusters press conference. He's back. I don't know why. The first thing that I bring up, though, is he's RG3, and he could just be Bob Griffin, but he chooses yep. to celebrate his full name, Robert Griffin the Third. Therefore, this thing of always, like he went to Cleveland and negotiated the number 10 so he could have it back. I, I'm going to say it again. Why not go Roman numeral three? That would really make him stand out. That was the least of it, though. That didn't even come up. Listen to didn't this string. That, yeah, no, I was hoping somebody <laughs> would ask him, "Why don't you do this already?" Or I wish they would have asked him, "What do you? I mean, what do you think about having to wear that ridiculous browns on the side of your pants? That's very weird." Anywho, he instead strung together a bunch of cliches. Take a listen. It was truly an honor to be in this league. So, just glad they gave me an opportunity. And um, you know, that's why they call him coach. And uh, he'll, he'll put us in positions to be successful. Um, 
So it, it's not about I or me. It's about we. It's about us. Mm -hmm. It's us versus everybody outside of our locker room. And they're hungry. We're all hungry. Like I said, we all have a chip on our shoulder. And we haven't eaten dinner in a long time. So we're going to go get it. I mean, uh, no pressure, no diamonds. That's the... That's the one that he wants to become a cliche. Yeah, right. that's he his trademark. Yeah, now. that's his first album. Yeah, <laughs> no pressure, no diamonds. <laughs> that's his thirty for thirty. I like the head. I think it's time. That's the other thing. Let's get rid of the cornrows, man. Let's, uh, you know, just start fresh. Do something different. Uh, what would he do? What would you don't, have him do? Don't have cornrows. That, what do you mean? What would How about you? Do? you Maurice used to have cornrows, and I got rid of them no, no, when no, they no. went out of style. You and him could swap hair. Ooh, that's a good idea. Let's see if we can get that Photoshop check, Republic. <laughs> Dave with RG3's hair and vice versa. I like the this league. People like to talk about this league, but I'll, I'll point it out again. The, the incongruity with the fact that you want, if you're a football team or you're a pro, fo uh, a pro sports team, you want fans. You know, that's, that's, that's your lifeblood. You need people mm -hmm. who are desperate to come to the games or sure. watch on TV and spend money on the merch. So why the ongoing no one outside this locker room believes in us? What about the people you want coming to the game? Are they masochists? <laughs> are they going to be there to assume a loss and you're going to give them a pleasant surprise it, it's baffling to me. That's the weirdest of all the, uh, the football cliches. I would say for Browns fans, though, that it does ring more true than it does, for example, you know, with Panthers fans or Broncos fans. This young man is in this league to play the position of quarterback. and uh, you know, I In the it, National Football League. This young man is a big one, too. It's a qui a quietly, that this young yeah. man. We have to talk about them mm -hmm. in those terms for some reason. All right, let's talk about some young men that are going to be drafted in the all-time draft of 2016. A reminder and a lesson to you, Dan Van Kirk. You're mm -hmm. a newcomer to this. What we're doing here is it's the same draft order. We've already done the first five picks on the most recent show. I encourage you, nay, demand you go back and check that out. But in the meantime, we're up to pick number six here. Same draft order as we will see in Chicago at the end of the month. Same team needs same personnel, and so on and so forth. And, of course, it's time for the all-time draft of 2016 presented by McDonald's. Money Monopoly with 100 million food and cash prizes available. There are more prizes than there are players in the history of the NFL. I mention Ooh. the history of the NFL because rather than just having the pool of collegians that are actually available, I am expanding it to all football players in the history of of the Big Blue Marble, save current NFL players because as Terminator taught us, you can't be in two places at one time. Right. So you can't take Tom Brady. He's already spoken for by those New England Patriots. Besides that, though, team needs are, the, are, are what's relevant here, and you also need to consider these guys as college prospects. Don't look at John Elway as a guy who has sure. five Super Bowl appearances in a Hall of Fame jacket because, of course, you would still take him. Even if you have a good quarterback on your roster, you would want him. So you have to regard them as collegiate uh, prospects, mm -hmm. if you will. So at uh, number one, the Tennessee Titans decided to choose the backside of their franchise QB, Marcus Mariota. They went with USC's Anthony Munoz. Ryan Leaf to the Browns. Great That's pick. a shame. They had such a good opportunity to mm -hmm. do something special there um, with all those names. They could have gotten like Aikman or somebody like that. You know, They could have gotten, I don't know, Randall Cunningham out of UNLV mm -hmm. would have been interesting instead. Ryan Leaf out of Washington. Washington State. We'll see how he does. Reggie White goes to the Chargers. Roger Staubach from the Naval Academy. He was Heisman that Trophy touted winner. coming out? Oh, yeah. He goes to the Dallas Cowboys. And uh, and then Deion Sanders. It works perfectly, in fact, because he has his military service. So while Romo plays out the rest of his career, right. Staubach can go and toil for our military. And then sure. when Romo hangs <laughs> it up, Staubach's ready to Just go. Just jump right. straight in. Right. right. Then Deion Sanders, the uh, – I mean, what a – Local is. product. Yeah, Florida State. Boy, that guy's got wheels on him. So now we move on to the Baltimore Ravens. They have the sixth overall pick. Their team needs are described today for us by draft analysts. You can watch them on Path of the Draft and Mock Draft live. Bucky Brooks, take it away. Baltimore Ravens are picking six, have a ton of needs. Offensive line is an issue. Cornerback is an issue. But I believe they have to look at finding a way to upgrade their pass rush. Fortunately for them, there are a couple guys that are difference makers in this draft. Lawrence Taylor from North Carolina is a guy that has the talent to dominate off the edge. 
He's a certain upgrade over what they had in the position. Love his first step, quickness, and burst. Has a knack for getting home to the quarterback. He is someone that I think they seriously should consider. Derek Thomas from Alabama is another guy. Not quite as big as Lawrence Taylor, but just as nasty. Explosive first step quickness. Love his snap count anticipation. Has a knack for executing a bend and burst move. He also has a tomahawk. Either one of these guys could upgrade their pass rush. I think Baltimore has to look at a pass rush to get them back on track. Boy, I'll tell you what. And the the all-time draft, to, to step out of it for a second, whatever you think of it, it's worth watching on YouTube because yeah. you get to see the college highlights it's of these cool. all-time great yeah. football players. So and I when it's them, you. it's always like a grown man against kids. Right. It, it, I, I would just throw this offensive lineman there, and then I'm going to – I've always wanted to interview people that, like, if you were on Adrian Peterson's high school team, like, day two of practice freshman year, we were like, okay, so that guy's going to go do things, and then we're going to try and play f- football in high school. I, I'd say well, Derek Henry. You'd have to know right away, right? Derek Henry, I, I don't know what play in high school he would have ever gotten tackled. Though. Right. He's, he's gigantic. Right. He's, That's, I, it's, it's, it would be that thing where you'd be the opposing, opposing team and be like, oh, no, we've got to tackle that guy. Yeah, how big he is! Just right. to, you know, before when the teams are stretching, like, there was like, a what's small, that, who's that dude? Small window in my life in little league where I was much bigger than all the other kids, and I remember somebody's stepmom yelling, "Well, of course he's gonna hit it far. Look at him!" <laughs> and I wonder, <laughs> people, people had That's how to, they talk about Shrek in yeah. uh, the, in those movies, <laughs> right? Uh, they say that when I walk into buffets too, but. <laughs> <laughs> they they also had to say like JJ Watt had to get that yelled at him right, right. from the sideline. It's not even fair. They would yell or something, right? <laughs> that had to happen. Tis no man. Yeah. Tis a m- College, remorseless eating machine. College Handsome. State. Where do you think the Baltimore Ravens should? I go? think the Ravens would be angry to see Reggie White off the board. I think that's where they wanted. But I think you got to go with LT. I think they're crazy to not be looking at. Uh, I know he's a small school, but Mississippi Valley State wide receiver Jerry Rice is intriguing. Could be a difference maker. Andre Risen out of Michigan State, maybe a little bit of a reach there. Irving Fryer out of Nebraska, but mm. uh, all right, the pick is in here. With the sixth pick in the all time draft of 2016, the Baltimore Ravens select, got it right there, handsome, Lawrence Taylor. Outside linebacker, UNC. We move on now at uh, number seven. It's the San Francisco 49ers. You talk about a lot of holes there. But LT, yeah, I, th- I, I predict uh, that Bucky is right about him. Yeah. I think he's going to be special. I think he'll pay off. I like those wheels that he's <laughs> yeah. got there. Even though he's a little, little pigeon-toed, if you watch him run there, I think he's going to overcome that yeah. in nice mm-hmm. NFL career. All right, at number seven, it's the San Francisco 49ers. What do they need, Bucky Brooks? San Francisco 49ers are sitting at pick seven. They need to find a guy that can be the face of the franchise, meaning they need a quarterback. They need someone who can change their fortunes of the franchise by being a dominant player from the pocket. In this draft, they have a ton of guys that are available. We have John Elway, who's right down the road from Stanford. A guy who's a prolific passer, nice athlete, also played baseball. In fact, he was drafted by the New York Yankees. He could be someone they may can talk into coming and being a 49er. You also have Dan Marino from the University of Pittsburgh, mm. a guy who is a big, strong arm thrower, likes to pr- operate from the shotgun, but if he has weapons around him, he can get it out of his hands and allow those guys to work. The final option at this pick to me, Steve Young, coming out of BYU, ultra-athletic playmaker, probably one of the new wave dual-threat quarterbacks that we'll see in the league. I know this is a tough decision for the 49ers. You need a franchise quarterback. Which guy is the right guy for that team? Got, yeah, but going from BYU, going from the state of Utah to San Francisco, that'd be a big culture would, leap. Yeah. I don't think Steve Young and the 49ers make any sense mm-hmm. together there. Dan Marino, some off-the-field stuff. The the uh, Elway uh, thought is a good one. Answer. I'd wait a couple of rounds. There's a kid out of Notre Dame that I think could probably do something. You know, you wait, take him, take Joe Montana in round three. That could work out Not pretty familiar. well. And then, what was hey, his name again? Familiar with his name. Montana. Named after the state. Yeah. Too Texas. bad there's not an NFL team in Montana. Right. Then that exactly. would really, oh, that that would really would work great. out. That would have been really cool. But So then I would, you know, if I were them, I'd then, you know, maybe see if you can, f- you know, fill your backfield out. You know, a guy like Barry Sanders is a great, great player out of Oklahoma. Ooh, that's an interesting yeah. call. Yeah, broke a lot of records right. down there in uh, the Big Eight. Uh, Van Kirk, how say you? You know, all these guys look good. There's two things that I would distinguish it on if I were them. One, Elway's hair flip alone after oh, throwing that. Is that is a beautiful. great Northern enough, California mate. move. Gold you know, rolling. yes, I would I would maybe consider that. Other than that, I think they've got to sit down with these guys and go with the eye test. Who do you look at and see a winner? And in the interviews that they didn't show there, Dan Marino, I don't know if I see a winner in those mm. eyes. Mm. Mm. 
Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. You, wow, boy, percep- perceptive. You look in a man's eyes and you can read oh. what he's about. Huh? I saw the movie Draft Day and I feel like I really can evaluate Oh, yeah. That. I also, this is a team that succeeded in recent years because of their linebackers. Why not uh, look at Illinois' Dick Butkus? He's, now, got, na- what... he's got a nasty edge to him. I yeah. think he could be a nice fit there. All right, with the seventh pick in the all time draft of 2016, the San Francisco 49ers select, they go with the Golden Boy. John Elway, quarterback, Stanford. Yeah, short trip for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just get a couple pals to help him Look load up the back of his car. beautiful. His head, not enough is made of that. Look at Elway slinging it. Yeah, I think he's going to do well uh, with the 40. I don't think, whatever hair product he has, I don't think they make that shampoo anymore because you don't see people with that. He runs the, he looks like he runs the ball well too, does mm-hmm. this John Elway. He's going to be a good yep. scrambler Wheels. in the NFL. All right, to the Philadelphia Eagles. So Chip Kelly gets his quarterback. We'll see how that fit works out with Elway, now Chip Kelly, of course, moves over from Philadelphia. Philadelphia now left without some high-end talent on offense because Chip saw fit to purge a lot of that talent. Let's take a look at what their needs are, Bucky. Philadelphia Eagles want to get back in contention in the NFC East. They have a ton of needs that they need to consider. You have running back, you have offensive line, you even have some defensive woes in the secondary. But I believe this team should seriously look at the running backs and the guys that are available. Walter Payton, coming out of a small school down there in Jackson State. He's a guy that certainly could be adventurous, big-time player, love the way he runs inside and outside, has the speed to get to the perimeter. He is someone that you definitely have to consider. But if you don't like him, you want a guy that is probably the new wave running back? How about Marshall Falk from San Diego State? The Aztec guy is a guy that not only does it as a runner, a natural receiver, you could probably move him out and play some receiver with him. Depending on how the Philadelphia Eagles want to reconstruct their offense, it's going to be tough. Walter Payton, Marshall Falk, I don't know if you can go wrong. Hmm. Interesting thoughts there. They're all, there's a bounty mm. of good running backs available here. You could go with Texas kid uh, Earl Campbell, real banger there. I don't know that he suits that sort of a Ryan Matthews uh, duplicate there, so I don't know you want to go there. Handsome, where are you leaning this? Well, I, 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 don't, I don't think – I wouldn't trust the Peyton kid. I just – I think small school. Small. I don't think – I think this Translate. is a huge step for him, and I'm not sure it's going to work out. I mentioned Barry Sanders. The other guy I like is Ricky Williams. I think he could fit right in. Out of Texas. Offense. Out of Texas. I think he's a kid that could really fit in in that offense. All-time leading rusher in college football, yep. Van Kirk. How say you? Well, you know, I'm going to be honest here. I know that the, the need isn't heavy, but I would love to see my – Chicago Bears move up from 11 and take this Walter Payton guy. I don't think he's going to be there at that point. They're probably going to end up with somebody like Cedric Benson out of Texas, which, you mm. know, I mean, he looks Great phenomenal. Too. He looks phenomenal. Uh, for the Eagles, I don't think you can pass up on somebody like Walter Payton. The word is also on him, great teammate. And that says a lot about somebody who does more than just their position, really can add a lot of life to sweet. the team. I hear sweet. he throws – sweet indeed. I hear he throws the ball. I hear he throws a sweet uh, deep ball. So with the eighth pick in the all-time draft of 2016, the Eagles select Walter Payton running back, Jackson State University. We'll see if handsome cynicism plays out or if the optimism of Van Kirk works out for them. Either way, we move on to number nine, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. What do they need, Bucky Brooks? The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are in the NFC South. They are languishing behind the Carolina Panthers and the Atlanta Falcons and the New Orleans Saints. They had to find a way to fix their defense to get back in contention. When I look at their needs, they definitely need a pass rusher. They also need a difference maker in the secondary, a corner safety, someone who can change the game. In this draft, you have a ton of world-class athletes with outstanding football pedigrees. Maybe you go down to Southern Cal, look at Ronnie Lott, a guy who is a natural cornerback, but he's a very, very smart player, has nice instincts. Maybe someone consider as a guy that you start outside, eventually move inside. If I'm looking at that defensive line, how about Bruce Smith from Virginia Tech? You just don't see guys like that who have a penchant for getting to the quarterback. Tough decision. If I'm in Tampa, I'm trying to figure out which one is going to give me bigger impact. Is it a pass rusher or is it somebody in the back end that can knock balls away and eventually get interceptions? Ooh, the hokey. Bruce hmm. Smith, he's uh, that's interesting. What about Rod Woodson? We also heard uh, some talk about Ronnie Lott, even for the first overall pick to the Tennessee Titans. Van Kirk, where are you leaning here? I mean, if he's still there, and and you, you you're going to take a pass on another guy I like in this league, uh, in this draft, Charles Woodson. I would go Ronnie Lott. I mean, there is you can really shut down an entire team if you can shut down their passing. 
if you can just make them one-dimensional, you can win a lot of games. Yeah, and he's a cornerback, but they also are looking at him as possibly making a conversion to safety. Handsome Hank, how say you? I, I, last year, you drafted Jameis Winston. I want to get him some weapons, and so there, I think a t- the tight end position is, is somewhere you could end up looking, and there are two guys that I really like, Kellen Winslow Sr. Mm-hmm. and Kellen Winslow Jr. Hmm. And if I was the Bucks, I'd probably go with Jr. I just think he's going to turn out to be a better player. The kid from the U. Yes. Who's the Local. warrior. Yeah, he's a You're warrior. Not he's a soldier. At, he's a soldier. He's a soldier. So he's, a, yeah, yeah, not a yeah. warrior. I'm he's sorry. He's not a warrior. He's they, a soldier. They, right, I get confused. Yeah. But the, uh, but, and then Kellen Winslow Sr., Senior. the guy from Missouri. Right. Not him. Not him. The junior. I thought you might go with uh, Tony Gonzalez. Uh, no. Cal. You know, he played basketball while really? Cal, too. Do yeah. you think that's going to translate? I don't know. Some I mean, I don't know if it'll have little... much value to an NFL yeah. team. But all right, with the ninth pick in the all-time draft, Tampa selects Ronnie Lott, cornerback, mm. USC. Well, he's a banger, that's for sure. But in the uh, the pass-happy NFC South, you figure uh, he'll add some uh, some toughness. That's what the Falcons want to do. He's going to be showing down with Cam Newton now. Cam Newton won't like that. This kid coming full speed. From uh, from way back in the secondary to deliver a belt on number one there, that's going to put a dent into uh, Superman. And now we get to pick number ten, the New York Football Giants. Bucky Brooks, how say you on what they need? The New York Football Giants are sitting at pick ten, and they have to find a way to rejuvenate that running game. You can do it a couple of different ways. You can go and find a running back. Maybe he can change the fortunes by being able to be dynamic inside and outside. Or you can go to the offensive line and find a big tackle that can push the line of scrimmage and allow whoever's in the backfield to find creases. I'm of the mindset that it's time to invest in a big-time running back. This class is loaded with premier runners. Jim Brown from Syracuse, one of the best running backs that we've seen in the college game, a guy who also played lacrosse, very athletic, love his balance and body control. How about Earl Campbell, the Tyler Rose from Texas, physical running back, establishes a presence on the inside, but being able to run over linebackers between the tackles. And then you have a little kid from Pittsburgh, Tony Dorsett, Heisman Trophy winner, explosive on the perimeter. Man, I know if I'm looking at the running back position, I got to figure out what style fits my team. But either way, three talented options on the board. Tough decision for whoever's in charge. Yeah, not, and not even a mention of mm. uh, Barry Sanders, who yeah. you've been uh, singing some songs about there. Yeah, a lot of different ways you can go. This door set's got wheels. He's a, That's his chief virtue. I mean, right there, it didn't even look like he was trying to run. No. Blowing past people. And yet he uh, tried hard enough to uh, set the all-time record for rushing yards, ultimately broken by Wick- Ricky Williams. Dan Van Kirk, where are you looking if you're I think team? even though there's a coaching change in New York, there's still a team that wants to play a lot of smash mouth, run the ball football, and I think you can do that best behind uh, – uh, the guy, what is it, uh, Brown? Jim Brown? Jim Brown. Just Brown. from what I saw there, he looked like they somebody They say he's the really best, best lacrosse player. Yeah, I've, I've never history. seen him oh. play football. I've seen him play lacrosse. Now, I bet that would translate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What are you thinking, Handsome? I, I mean, I, I totally agree with Dan. I think they need two big, you know, two big guys to choose from, but I, I go Brown. All right, well, uh, so we'll see what they do here. You know, it's worth noting, too, the, the the Giants have been around forever for as long as the NFL's been around. Isn't it weird that Tiki Barber and Lorenzo Hampton are their two best running backs ever? <laughs> yes. You think, like, well, yeah, oh, well, Jim Brown or Earl Campbell, wow, they'd be perfect Giants, except that they'd be way better than any running back that the Giants have ever had. Yeah. Right. Frank Gifford is actually probably their best. Joe Morris had back. some good years. Joe Morris was good, and Otis right. Anderson was good, but it's but, weird that the all-time leading rusher in yeah. Giants history is Tiki Barber, and number two is Lorenzo Hampton. Well, it's another Rodney ep- Hampton. It's another episode. Rodney Hampton. It's Rodney. another episode, but you know, Bears are the charter franchise of the NFL, and you can do the same thing when you want to talk about quarterbacks. Right. It's They've got one decently to slow, lightly mediocre quarterback, and he's the greatest they've ever had by far. Yeah, yeah. very strange. Yeah. All right, the tenth pick in the all-time draft. That's the Cade McNamara. Giants select Jim Brown, running back, staying in state from Syracuse. He moves down 44. We'll see what number he chooses to wear for the Giants, but a classic team with a guy who, you know, projects to to really be uh, dynamite. Kind of maybe a, a fair to say he's like a poor man's Brandon Jacobs handsome, Hank. I think that's, yeah, that's a good way of looking at him. At minimum. That's yeah, what they're trying, to, they're trying to recapture that. 
yeah. that kind of performance. Right. Speaking of recap, uh, Munoz goes to the Titans, Leaf to the Browns. Reggie White from UT is a Charger now. Staubach from the Navy goes to the Cowboys. That seems like a good fit. Deion Sanders stays in state. He's a Jaguar. LT Lawrence Taylor from UNC is a Raven. Elway to the Niners. Peyton, Walter Peyton. Funny because like Sean Peyton is already in the league. Now we have a couple of Peytons in the mm. league now. So he goes to uh, to the Eagles. Ronnie Lott goes to Tampa. And Jim Brown goes to the Giants. And that's it for the all-time draft of 2016 presented by McDonald's Money Monopoly. We will continue go through these picks 11 through 15 coming up on the next show. I thought that was fun, handsome. I know you're not a big fan of the offense. I've draft. thoroughly enjoyed that. Do you why do, tell me tell me what your concerns are with it? Why don't you enjoy the all-time draft? I just did enjoy the all-time. Did you? What do you want? Van Kirk, do you like it or no? Yeah, I'm get just, rid of it. I'm terrified next week when I tune in and see what the Bears ended up doing cuz it's going to be a mistake. Well, I mean the Browns <laughs> took Ryan Leafs. <laughs> I'm amazed by how many Teams would have had the entire identity of their program changed forever if they had just picked somebody in state. Hmm. Like so many of these guys are from the same state. Right. Well, he would have, Syracuse would yep. have gone right there. It's just like fishing. Sometimes the fish are just under the dock. I advocate, you know, you're wearing a Blackhawks hat, uh, Dan Van Kirk. Yes. And the original six back in the mid 20th century, do you know that the original six, those teams were, I, I'm trying to think of exactly how it worked. You had dibs on anybody from within a 50-mile radius, I think is what it was, That's or maybe great. it was a 100-mile radius. I think it was a 50-mile radius of your city. It was Detroit, Chicago, New York, Boston, Montreal, Toronto. Right. So if you had, so you if you look at who won all the Stanley Cups, it was consistently Montreal right. and then Toronto a little bit less and then Detroit a little bit less. Chicago, New York, and Boston, I think those were the three that couldn't win Stanley Cups. And, and wh why was that? Why were they always so bad? It's because we didn't have you dips. could retain the, right. the rights yeah. of any local player there. Obviously, all the Canadian guys were up there. I would love it if the NFL required that. Get we back did, to it. We did a little tournament yeah, with did. that about two years yeah. ago, where we where we sketched out who would where have all the best local team. Yeah. Yes, who would have the best Ooh. local team? It's the awesome. Jaguars would be unreal, wouldn't they? Um, I'm trying to think who won the tournament. I think it was. Uh, it came down to I, Dallas. I think a Pittsburgh. I think a Pittsburgh team did pretty well as well. Pittsburgh did all right, but they were surprisingly shallow. Because, I mean, if you did a historical right. one, no. But if 21st century, not as many kids coming out of Pennsylvania. The team, I think the team that won it was uh, – New Orleans was yeah, – really. I think L.A. won. Well, that's I what think. I say. The new L.A. Rams will would have a – they'd field a very good local team. Yeah, I think that was the mm -hmm. best of them all. But Miami was good, as you would expect. And uh, – Louisiana is strong. The two Texases were good. Yeah. Yeah. And D.C., yes, Wilk. Yeah, uh, Washington, D.C. of all places. Yeah. That was the biggest surprise. Anyway, no surprise that Dan Van Kirk was terrific on the show. In his virgin run, we appreciate the Sklar brothers for loaning him out to us, <laughs> and uh, we're excited. To, to uh, we'll make sure you get your deposit back. Yeah, and, uh, and Handsome Hank, a pleasure to have you back in the fold. DVK on Nerdist, you can, on the uh, Nerdist YouTube channel, DVK, how many times a week? Oh, they're all dropped. All episodes are out there, so you can check out all of them. They're just like the fun, fun mini sketches, just a YouTube size show. Excellent. A uh, tremendous talent in Dan Van Kirk. You'll see more of his work coming up on NFL Now here. Handsome Hank, his uh, his talents expressed on NFL.com and, uh, and on this podcast. Early next week, we're back with more, including the all-time draft of 2016 presented by McDonald's Money Monopoly. We'll get through 11 to 16 then. Have a swell weekend. Johnny Football, Denver Broncos. I hope we can talk about their union <laughs> by the next time we speak. In the meantime, thanks so much, football fans. It's been a thin slice of heaven.